Build a second brain, have a second brain. Use flashcards, use space repetition, use Notion, use Rome, use RemNote, use Obsidian. Make sure you're creating an output from your input. There are so many things in this pod of productivity that's confusing, and I think we are asking ourselves the wrong questions. No, we're not. Sorry. We're not asking the wrong questions. So why have we got cults of people of applications arguing with one another about features? Because it is important to find the right tools. And it's fun to argue. The right tool for what? Note-taking. Yeah, but what is actually note-taking for you? And that is where people get stuck. It is easy to think that if you follow a successful person or do what a successful person does, you will become somewhat successful. But you know, and I know, and they know that it doesn't work like that. So why are you still copying someone else? Well, I'm not copying their workflow, I'm just taking bits from theirs and adding it to my own. Right, right. I like that. So you're taking the things you like, putting it into your workflow, then doing some self-reflection and deciding whether you're going to keep it or not. Well, the deciding bit kind of just happens. I don't really look at any, any metrics or anything like that to see if it's improved. I sort of just change it. That sounds like you're just copying it, waiting for something else to pop up, then copying that and changing it. Mm, yeah, that's about right. And therein lies another one of the issues. Why don't you copy someone like Picasso or Einstein or someone that doesn't have the tools or is working with cutting edge technology? Ah, uh, because that is effort. Agreed, that's fair. But it works the same now as it did back then. You put work in, you get some results back. Do you think everyone knows what a second brain is? No. Does everyone know about bi-directional links? No. Does everyone know that you can watch YouTube at times two speed? Or even better, can they watch it at times two speed and still understand what the person's saying? Probably not. Now, does that mean they're not being productive? Not necessarily. Right, so note-taking doesn't have much to do with the tech because it could be done on that ancient tool known as paper. Mm-hmm. Now, I know tech has come a long way with the bi-directional links, the graph view, OCR, which is basically taking paper and putting it onto a computer, but anyway, and then you have search on Google or in your files and folders or in the application you're using to store your notes. But at the end of the day, note-taking is recording information. Exactly, and to get the most out of your notes, you need to link them or, or have a tool that gives you unlinked references for you. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, because when you look at most people that are doing well, yes, they have lots of knowledge in a specific area, typically one they're excited about, but they understand the, the base knowledge, the fundamentals, the core of whatever it is they're learning. Yeah, so what that got to do with me linking my notes? I think of it as a tree, your fundamentals, your base knowledge is the trunk that supports everything, and then the links are the branches going off everywhere else. Now what happens if you have a small trunk but loads of branches? You get a stubby tree. <laughs> yes, yeah, true, but you're cramming all of those branches onto the tree, and maybe some branches will snap off, or the tree will just fall over. Great metaphor! But we ain't trees and we've got digital tools. Okay, that's fair. Practical example then. If you have 400 links related to a topic that you want to write about, where do you start? Uh, the top, I guess. But what if you knew link 239 was actually the subjective best place to start? Then I would just start with that one. So you prioritise the connections in your head, not in the app, and then you do what with all the other links? Well, I won't necessarily go through them all. Why not? Because <laughs> that's a lot of effort. And I probably won't need them all either. So you take a just-in-case approach. That's interesting. So here's another question. Why do you take a just-in-case approach? What is that? Basically, you have all of the information stored somewhere just in case you might use it at some point. Even though, typically, most of that information will probably be used in the future, maybe soon in the future, or way in the distant future, where 
when you're writing, you need the information just in time. Yeah, but it's got to be stored to resurface it. Uh-huh, exactly. So stored, but not necessarily linked. Kinda. So the features are more of a nicety rather than a necessity. Nah, I need the features. So you can't make the connections yourself? No, I can. I just might forget. Now that sounds like a bit of fofy. Fear of forgetting information. Now where did you hear that? On a live stream, in the chat, because I love a good conversation, especially about philosophy, because there's no right or wrong answer. And it is so much fun. But it's so confusing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Then that's philosophy for you. So if there is no right or wrong answer, and you should or should not do something that you can but don't need to do, what do I do? Like I said earlier, this shit confusing! There are so many things in this pod of productivity, like the branches. Think of like the branches. Your workflow, your system, your process is your trunk. And if your knowledge in those areas are limited, then you have a small trunk. Not that sort of trunk, you idiot! Okay, using the analogy, when you think of the trees, the apps, the features, the philosophies, the methodologies, the approaches to getting stuff done, they're all branches that you attach to the trees. Now, we can have multiple trees, but in the end of the day, we are the ground, we're the stuff supporting all those things, and if, uh, and if the ground isn't solid enough, things will just fall over. Are we still using the tree metaphor, or are you getting a little bit stressed? No, 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 no. I'm good, I'm good. My trunk is big enough to hold multiple branches. You understand how you work. Yes, exactly. So how do I know how big my trunk is? Uh, let's leave the tree metaphor for a minute, but that is a good point. That is one of the other questions I was thinking of earlier. Another one. What were the others? I wasn't really paying attention. <sighs> okay, do you copy other people without deliberate reflection? Do you need all of those features to actually be creative? Are you more fearful of forgetting information than actually using information and doing something with it? And then the question I was just thinking of, how well do you know your process, your workflow and system, and do you know it well enough? Well enough for what? Well enough to start adding all this productivity jargon into it. You know, it's very easy to start attaching branches and, and doing all of this stuff and not actually getting anything done. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. You know, a famous person once said... No, no, don't quote some old person using words I don't understand. Just explain what they meant. Okay, basically they said it's easy to find a hiding place from work, especially in tech. Are you suggesting I'm hiding from my work by watching videos and, and learning stuff and building stuff? Yes. Yeah, that's probably fair. There is kind of a line-ish that we can draw between work and procrastination. Go on. The 80-20 rule. 80% of the stuff that happens is down to 20% of the actions you take. Then you have diminishing returns. Eventually you'll get to a point where the more work you put in, you'll actually get less and less in return. So you're saying I need to make an arbitrary line that I can just pluck out of the air for the consumption of information. That might be a way to do it, but as a famous person once said... No, simple words, explain it in plain language. No, it was pretty simple to be fair. Uh, attention, intention. Be intentional with your attention. What? We all have squirrel moments where our brain just goes all over the place, where your mind starts wandering, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, because that's where your brain starts to make connections and creates ideas and is creative, so we don't want to stop that, but we can't really stop it either. But what we can do is we can check, is our attention matching our intention? So is the attention helping what we were intentionally trying to do at that time? Can you give me an example? Okay, my intention right now is to talk to my wall as if I was talking to myself, because that's what I need to do for the video. But my attention is kind of elsewhere with stuff I'm not going to say on camera. Right, so that's stuff you have in mind, that's the stuff you're going to write down. Maybe, maybe not. Some notes are turned into videos. Some notes are turned into squirrel moments where I just 
brainstorm lots of different ideas in thought. Some notes just sit in an archive, storage, waiting for something to happen. But all notes are written down and then I intentionally do something with them. You're confusing me again. I just want a simple answer. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And to be honest, no one can give you an answer to that question apart from you. You have to answer that. This conversation was meant to be helpful. It was. It was fun. It was thought-provoking. And, most importantly, it was a distraction from whatever you were meant to be intentionally doing right now. So I suggest you get back to it.